Hello and welcome to Lessons with Cameron. Today we're sitting down with my uh, <laughs> my old BC Rich Warlock. This was, uh, I would say, in this grand scheme of things, this was my fourth guitar. So this one is the oldest guitar that I still have my hands on that I've, uh, from when I learned how to play. And this is when I was making the same decisions that I'm trying to help people make in these videos, is this is how I wound up at this guitar. And I didn't make a mistake, though it probably looks like I did. So let's talk a little bit about the features of this particular instrument, what it brings uh, to the table, and where it falls short. First thing that you'll notice is not the pickups, but the pickups are what I want to talk about. The pickups are humbucking pickups, and they are pretty much the same kind of pickups that you might have seen in my Minarik Lotus video or in the Gibson Les Paul video, or actually in the Minerick Medusa video. Well, it's the same style of pickup, but that doesn't mean it's the same pickup. And so from each guitar to each guitar, they've all had the same style of pickups, but they're all sounding very different. In this case, these are very inexpensive compared to the other ones, and therefore the sound is gonna really kind of show that. Down here, we've got a floating bridge. Now this is a Floyd Rose licensed bridge, and uh, it's, just okay. I personally have a hard time using these things and keeping the guitar in tune. Uh, these, the wrench lockdown, all this stuff, I wound up either stripping, losing, or one way or another over the years, these just became more of a hassle than help, so I got rid of them, and it just freely floats in there. Of course, this guitar, if you mess with this bridge at all, you're out of tune so far that it hurts. At the time, it was great. Today, I don't use this guitar for anything other than taking places where I don't mind if the guitar doesn't make it home with me. So, let's talk a little bit about the shape. This shape here is the BC Rich Warlock shape, and it was actually designed by Minerick back in the 80s, who is the same designer who makes Minerick guitars today. And that's why you can see some of the resemblances between the BC Rich Warlock here and the Minerick Medusa here. Granted, they're very different guitars, but there's definitely, uh, you can see a little bit of the DNA kind of sneaking through. Now this is back in the early 90s when this one came out, or when this particular one was purchased, I should say, because these guitars were pretty popular in the 80s and throughout some of the 90s. And the, the BC Rich Warlock came in a lot of configurations from what they call a bronze series to a platinum series to a NJ series. And that usually used to be pretty easy to tell. The bronze series was the super low entry level with really cheap hardware, a really cheap guitar. The next level up was the platinum, which is this here. Now the platinum, appeared to be a better guitar, and it was basically still a cheap guitar with slightly better hardware. As you move on to the NJ series and you get to the USA made BC Riches, it turns out you not only find a wonderful instrument that plays great and sounds good, but it also costs a whole ton of money. So at that level, you start looking at the Les Pauls and the American Fenders, and you start kind of looking a little differently. So with this guy here, this is an import series. It is made by BC Rich, and uh, we've got a floating bridge one volume, one tone, and then over here I've got a pickup switch that allow me to switch back and forth, and I've long since lost the knob, so I just leave it the way it is. It's not like this guitar gets much mileage anymore. There's also a pickup booster, uh, which has also lost the nut and fell inside. Luckily, it was boosted on at the time, so the way that I prefer to have it, it's how it is. Other than that, it's got a maple neck, which is awfully nice to go with this rosewood fretboard, also real nice. Connected to, to my disappointment through some overzealous chipping of the guitar, plywood. So I'm not a, wasn't a real happy camper to find out this is a plywood guitar, but at the same time, it served its purpose. And at the time, this was about a $200 instrument uh, with my, cause it's pink discount. So here's, uh, here's some sounds out of this thing. We'll start with the clean stuff. Give it some distortion and see what that sounds like. Switching it back over to the bridge pickup.
Well, I think that's a fair demonstration of how well a Floyd Rose tuner or a Floyd Rose bridge tuning setup stays in tune without the aid of these things because it couldn't even withstand that. This uh, particular fiddle has served me well over the years when I was really just kind of getting my feet wet and learning how to play the guitar. It wound up being great for just giving me something unique to play that occasionally would stay roughly in tune. And in this case, it's just not having it today. Great when you get on a stage that's really cold and you stand up there and your guitar starts warping and yeah, everything's just poorly out of tune. So this is the BC Rich Warlock. It's an import series back from the early 90s and uh, you're going to find very similar build quality today. Just keep an eye out for things like, you know, plywood bodies and that kind of stuff. Overall, it was a playable guitar that did serve me well, so I wouldn't say to avoid this kind of instrument, but definitely do your homework. Make sure that it plays and sounds as good as you want, um, and maybe you'll hold on to yours for 20, 30 years and see if, you know, you can make a video about it as well. So this has been Lessons with Cameron. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. Mm.